Hey, Honors Algebra 2 and Algebra 2 kids. We are on page 125 of your student journals. We're going over lesson 5.1, which is about rational exponents. So the first thing I want to kind of talk about is what is a rational exponent. And so um, you've done exponent properties, and a lot of these exponent properties that you've learned in the past are going to apply to what we talk about when we refer to rational exponents. A rational exponent is just a fractional exponent. Um, and so one of the first things I want you to understand is that we can take a radical. So where do these fractional exponents come from? Um, if we take a radical, we can rewrite this as a fractional exponent. So when you have a fractional exponent, what it refers to is a root. So like instead of saying the square root of 2, we can call it 2 to the 1 half. And so what I want you to understand is that what this is really saying is that this is 2 to the first power. So like think of it as just 2, right? But 2 to the first power. And a square root is a root of 2. So what this means is when you have a fractional exponent, this top number here, this numerator, refers to the power. And the 2, or the denominator, refers to the root. And so what we're referring to here is that's where the kind of the whole fractional exponent comes into play. So if I had cube root of 2, I could rewrite that as 2 to the first power over 3. So like in other words, 2 to the 1 third power. Um, again, fourth root of 2 would be 2 to the 1 fourth, and so forth and so on. Where it gets more interesting is when we have, let's say, a power and a root. So if I have 2 to the fourth power, but I take the fifth root of 2 to the fourth power, um, then I could write that as 2 to the four-fifths. So again, the four represents the power on your whatever it is that you're taking the root of. So that represents the power, this represents the root. So you could kind of go frontwards and backwards with this. So I could give you a, a, an expression that's in with a rational exponent and then you can rewrite it in radical form, or I can give you something in radical form you can rewrite it in um, exponent form. Um, another thing I'd like us to be able to do is kind of evaluate, I guess, so to speak, um, evaluate um, um, rational exponents. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, all right, so an nth root just means any root. So when you, when you see something like this, it just means an nth root. Um, and so we're saying like this would be 16 to the 1 over n. So in your calculators, you will see like under the math button and stuff, you can take nth roots of stuff. Um, but I'll be honest, if I were going to evaluate like, you know, the fourth root of something, I generally don't write it as a radical. I write it as a fractional exponent. So I just raise it to the one fourth rather than trying to figure out what the, you know, find the button on my calculator that gives me the fourth root. Um, another example, like the index of a radical, something like, you know, again, uh, the fifth root of 10 to the fourth. We could think of it as um, 10 to the 1 fifth raised to the fourth. So that's another way of thinking of it, right? So 10 to the 1 fifth, that means the fifth root of 10, and then it's raised to a power of 4. And this is where those exponent properties come into play, right? So we talked about how we could just write this as 2 to the 4 fifths, right, with the power root. It's the same thing over here. I could write this as 10 to the 4 fifths, right? Because this power to this root, you multiply those together. Um, all right, so basically what we're getting at is we want us to be comfortable with kind of switching formats. So whether we from um, exponent form, what I call, or radical form, and vice versa. And we're going to do a lot of simplifying of all of these lovely expressions that we're going to get into. Um, all right, so um, when you have a, when you take an even root, so remember like I've always said, like if you square root both sides of an equal sign, you have to put the plus or minus. Um, and so we kind of talked about it as square root, but to be honest with you, now we're going to extend that. It's if you even root both sides of an equal sign, you're going to take the plus, you're going to do plus or minus. Or an even root can have both a positive and a negative value for it. Because even if I took like the fourth root of something, let's say I took the fourth root of 16. Okay, so think about what the fourth root of 16 is. What number multiplied by itself four times gives me 16? Well, the answer is 2, right? You're saying, like, oh, okay, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. But also negative 2 could work as well because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is also 16. So what they're getting at here is anytime you have an even root, there are really kind of two possible answers. An odd root is not 
quite the same. Like if I had the third root of negative eight, there's only one answer to that. Remember, you can take the odd root of a negative number. It doesn't necessarily, it's not gonna be imaginary. Unlike if you took the, uh, if you took a, a root of a negative number that was happened to be an even root of a negative number, you would get an imaginary number. But the odd root, so like the third root of negative eight, my answer is negative two. And the reason why is because negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight. It does not work if I said, okay, well, so could two work, right? Well, no, because two times two times two is not negative eight, it's positive eight. So there's some issues. So anytime you have an even root, there could be two possible choices or two possible answers, but an odd root, you're only gonna get one possible answer. Some other examples that we're, I want us to be able to kind of get into is being able to evaluate without using a calculator. So you could type this into your calculator. Um, and so you could go, and I'll show you, you could go ahead and go um, eight, and then hit the caret button, and it brings up like kind of a, an exponent, and you just type in two thirds, and hit enter, and get four. And I get that you can do this, um, and I'm not taking away your calculators for assessments and stuff, but I wanna see what I'm gonna be asking you to do is show me the process of how you would do this without a calculator. And so this is what I want you to kind of be able to show me. When you have a power in a root, I want you to think of being able to separate the root from the power. So it's like you're taking the opposite of your exponent properties, right? So instead of like normally you would put this together to equal that, right? But this time we're pulling it apart. We're kind of, we're separating that root and the power. I all, and it doesn't really matter if you do power then root, but I always do root first then power. So then I want you to be able to think about, okay, what is eight to the one third? Well, that just means the cube root of eight. So the cube root of eight is two. So that means I'm taking two squared, which gave me four. Um, and so I want us to be able to, you know, expand with this without using a calculator. So I want you to think apart about like pulling apart the root and the power. So that's going to kind of be your, your goal, is to kind of think about that. Um, another example, I'll give you another example of that, would be like 16 to the 3 halves. So first of all, I want you to understand what that means. That means you're taking 16 cubed, okay? So another way of writing this, I could write it as the square root of 16 cubed. Like you could also see it written like that. Because remember, this is your power and this is your root. So this is a square root and that's 16 to the third power. But again, um, if I was gonna ask you to evaluate this without a calculator, I would have you take the 16, I would have you separate the root from the power. So again, kind of pull those two things apart, pull apart that fraction. And then you would say, okay, 16 to the one half. What does that mean? Well, 16 to the one half means the square root of 16, which is four. And now we can do four to the third power is 64. So on your homework and on your practice and stuff that you'll be looking at when we do this stuff in our classes, I'll be asking you to evaluate without a calculator. So obviously I know that you're gonna get the right answer because you have a calculator in front of you. But what I'm gonna look is to see that you have the process correct. All right, let's turn to page 126. Um, and uh, we are going to look at uh, this next example, and this one is, involves negative exponents. And so I know that you're somewhat familiar with negative exponents, um, but we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and chat a little bit about what we're going to do with rational exponents that happen to be negative. All right. So for example, if I had like x to the negative one half, I'm just going to use x this time rather than using a specific number. So if I had x to the one half, the first thing I want you to remember is your first goal is to always get rid of your negative exponents. So if you remember, it's the same process as you did before. So if you have a negative exponent, you're basically taking the reciprocal. So if I had x to the one half, I'm gonna bump it to the bottom. So I'm gonna make it as one over um, x to the one half. And that's, that's basically all you're even really gonna do on this one. And so if this were a number and you could actually square root it, because this means the square root of x, then you would go ahead and simplify it. Let me give you another example. If I had 27 to the negative two thirds. So what I'm asking you to do here is, this is one I would expect you to evaluate without a calculator. So what I would be looking for is your first step is to go ahead and rewrite this without negative exponents. So you would bump that to the bottom. Next step would be to go ahead and separate the root 
from the power. So again, I pulled apart like the one third, which was my root and the power, which is two. Um, and then my next step is to go ahead and um, simplify this as best I can. So 27 to the one third, that means the cube root of 27, which is three. And then finally, I would simplify three squared and get one ninth. So I want you to recognize that, you know, 27 to the two thirds is one ninth. And so again, I would like you to recognize that you are doing this without a calculator. All right, so let's look at some other examples. Um, all right, so it says even roots of negative numbers will always, will be an imaginary or a non-real answer. So we talked about that in the last, you know, in, when I went over that here just a couple minutes ago. Um, you're never gonna have, if you're taking the even root of something, you're never gonna have like, if you have the even root of a negative number, you're always gonna have an imaginary answer. So let me talk a little bit about kind of what they're asking you to do here. It says find the indicated real nth root of A. So they said nth root of A. So that means this means this is the third root of negative 25. So that's what they're saying here, here. The n is your root and A is what you're taking the root of. So what is the third root of negative 125? So there are some that I'm gonna want you to know. So like the 125 should be one that we kind of know, and that's gonna be five, or in this case, negative five, because the third root of a negative number is negative. I'll do another one. So this means the square root of negative 400. So the square root of negative 400. Well, in this case, it's not going to be real. So there would be no real nth roots because you can't take an even root of a negative number. Now, we do know how to evaluate like unreal solutions. So I could call this plus or minus, um, I could take the square root of 400, which is 20, and the square root of a negative, which is i. So I could reduce this to the square root of 20i. But again, it's only asking you for real roots, so technically you didn't have to do that. I'll save number three for you guys to kind of practice or when we're in class. All right, so notice all of these. These are all examples of ones to do without a graphing calculator or out any kind of calculator. So I really wanna challenge you to not use your calculator on these. So I'm gonna do a couple with you um, and then we'll go ahead and um, try some of these. I'll do six. Um, I guess I'll do nine because it has a negative exponent and maybe I'll do 11. So I'll do those three. All right, so anyway, you have 32 to the 7 fifths. So again, what I want you to be thinking is pulling apart the root from the power. I always do the root first because it's easier. Um, you're gonna get, when you're taking the root of something, you're gonna get a smaller number. And then if you have to raise it to a power, that's a lot easier to do in your head. So the fifth root of 32, think about that one for a second. What number multiplied by itself five times gives me 32? And the answer is two. Um, two to the seventh power. So that might not be one I would have you memorize. So I probably wouldn't make you do that one without a calculator, but I know you guys all have them. But anyways, two to the seventh power, if you worked it out, is 128. Let's do number nine. So this one says 1,000 to the negative two thirds. So my first step is to get rid of that um, negative exponent. So I'm gonna bring that to the bottom. Then I am going to separate my root from my power. So I'm gonna go 1,000 to the one third, raised to the second. What is the cube root of 1,000? So hopefully you said 10. And remember we're squaring that. So my answer is one over 100. All right, last but not least, um, this one, I did this one only because you might have to think a little bit. So the fourth root of 625, so again, if you know, um, you know your answers are generally going to be between 0 and 10, probably 0, you know, 0 and 9 for sure. So what number can I multiply by itself four times to equal 625? Well, 625 is a perfect square. It's, it's 25 times 25. So if I broke this down into 25 and 25, and then I broke this down into 5 and 5, and 5 and 5, Remember when we're doing fourth roots, instead of doing square roots, this we're looking for the four of four of the same number. That means I'm looking at five as my final answer. All right, let's turn the page to number 127. There's some more stuff here. <laughs> um, we're actually gonna have you guys do this stuff. I'm gonna skip that first part. We're gonna bump down to number 16. 
So in this one, it talks about finding solutions. So we're actually now kind of encompassing like how we're going to use rational exponents to help us solve. So it says, find real solutions to your equation, round your answer to two decimal places where appropriate. So you're solving this, and this is going to be a big component of what we're going to be doing in this unit is we do a lot of solving, right? So your first step is to go ahead and divide by 6. So I get cube root of negative 1. I'm sorry, I get x cubed equals negative 1. To get rid of an, something that's being cubed, you can think of this in one of two ways. You can think of taking the root, or you can think of raising it to the one-third power. But just like this, to get rid of something that's being squared, you would square root both sides. To get rid of something that's being cubed, you would cube root both sides. So the cube root and cube cancel each other out. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. It's always appropriate or important to go ahead and check your answers when you are um, when you are solving radical equations. So if you plug back in negative one, I get negative one cubed. So negative one times negative one times negative one is negative one. Negative one times six gives me negative six. So this answer does indeed check out. There are sometimes going to be what we're going to be calling and what you're going to be talking about is called extraneous solutions, which means they look like solutions, but they're not real. All right, let's do number um, 18. So on this one, my first step is to add 32 to both sides. So I get that. I wanna get rid of the five, so that's a power. So to get rid of a power, I'm gonna raise this to the one fifth. Now I'm gonna write this as a rational exponent this time instead of a radical. It doesn't really matter each, either way you do it. Um, so I'm gonna raise this to the one fifth because five to the one fifth cancel each other out. In other words, it gives you one. And then what's negative 32 to the 1 fifth? What number multiplied by itself five times gives me negative 32? And the answer is negative 2. So then you would check your answer. Negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. Negative 32 minus 32 is indeed negative 64. Let's try number 20. The volume of a cube. So remember, a cube is a you know, rectangular prism that has length, width, and height all the same. So the volume formula for a cube is side equal or side raised to the third power equals volume. So I'm going to plug in 1,728 for my volume, and I want to figure out the dimensions. In other words, what are my side lengths? So I need to cube root both sides of my equation. This one you're going to probably want to grab a calculator. Cube root of something cubed. What is the cube root of 1,728? So what I would have done on this one is I would have done 1,728. I would hit the caret button and I would raise it to the one third power. And I get 12. There is another option if you go to math, you see where it says cube root here or x root, that's kind of gives you the option of putting in whatever root you want. So you have those options if you want to keep it in radical form. All right, we are gonna do a lot more practice with this, um, but I wanted to give you at least an introduction to all things that are rational exponents. So I encourage you to practice some of the stuff that we have on big ideas and come to class with questions. All right, thanks everyone.